Yay! Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another test day on the workbench. This video has another product that I'm going to share that I use, and it is called Score Tape. This is specifically for cards, boxes, glitter, scrapbooking, foils, ribbon, origami, and embossing. So this is one eighth inch tape. I will take it out of its package and I will show you how how good it is. That's how thin it is. And this is a twenty seven yard of twenty five M. And I'm going to peel this just, just a little bit so you can see how thin it is. That's pretty darn thin stuff. Ah, and very sticky. And that is some pretty decent stuff right there. This is also some stuff that I would even use on my, my roofing for my buildings and stuff. Comes on our easy roll. It's easy to tear. Um... You might say that you could, it's easier than the roll on stuff sometimes, uh, depending on the application. Um, stuff I'm referring to um, actually comes in one of these. Uh, you can roll it out like that, and it just, it works, but you know. Um, if I, be, I need a specific length, I can go a certain length with this, tear it, and good to go. That sometimes gets all bound up and stuff, so this might be a little bit better. Um, so, in my last video, I, I did this. I made this um, technique from um, Debbie's. Um, and um, the video... Uh, I go through is this a massive uh, a jump in steps. Uh, I went through and used a, fil a, a yellow filter. Um, Debbie uses a brown for a yellow. Um, she used uh, the brown for a dark yellow for a highlight, which is what I used. And then... I ended up using something different. She used a brown wash. Me, I used a uh, a wash for German dark yellow, not a brown wash for dark yellow. Um, so that's the difference that I used. And um, now we're going to be, re be redoing that a little bit, but this one's specific for my project that I'm, both of them are, but, uh, I'm doing a technique from what I've learned, was told from, um, a good friend and fellow, um, manufacturer, um, Frank from Mud Creek Models has taught, well, he explained to me, not necessarily really teaching me, but he shared um, what he what he did, and so um, I'm actually doing a little bit different of a technique today with what he did, um, and uh, instead of using the um, the filter uh, and uh, I'm also doing a, uh, a wash so um, I'm gonna be using a wash like I did in the other video but I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different than Frank that Frank taught me with rubber cement 
That's right. I'm going to be using rubber cement today. Um, and if, if it's applied right, uh, I hope uh, I don't mess this up for you, Frank, because I'm doing a video for it. So I'm creating a... Just taking some white... Just taking some white spirit into a little paint trough here. Good stuff. And yes, again, it is for enamel products. I'm going to fool around with that later today and see if I can get good outcome with uh, acrylics. But it states on there for enamel. Um, it doesn't have to be specifically for that, but nonetheless, that's what I'm doing. Okay, so now I got my brush. I'm going to just take a little bit of... This stuff is really thick, and again, AKA and ammo products are designed for military modeling. So, um, unless it says brush or airbrush, you'll probably have to make some adjustments on this. Um, Oops, sorry, there. Um, I will again. Um, quickly go over this again. Um, I did it in my last video, but this says here. Um, right there. Enamel product for accenting details and surface relief on models, especially surface, uh, especially suitable for dark yellow surfaces. Shake well before using. Use an AK number AK zero zero or sorry, AK zero one one. Uh, white spirit to soften the layers and clean your brushes. So that's what AK does. It's actually thinning the, this stuff out a little bit. And see how it just pools at the bottom? All I gotta do is just stir it up. And before I apply this, I am actually going to grab myself a paper towel. Paper towel. Because I'm going to do a full technique on this one like I did in my last video as well. So. Uh, okay, so now we're going to put this stuff over out of the way there. Put you there. And, and yes, you do hear my daughter playing in the background, which is just typical like during the week. Um, so here we have the mix of the white spirit and the wash for dark yellow. Um, I don't have it yet, but it, it's on its way. I'm waiting for it to get here. But it is the wash. Or no, I did get it. It's, I have a quick brown wash that I'll be monkeying with. So it all applies the same. Um, and you just load your brush up. And you just kind of come down here. And I'm going to come up close so you can see it. Um, it's going to start on one side of this. And I want you to see what happens. The reaction. See 
See that? See how that turns out? Um, and so I just load it up again, and I just come down on this side. See how the minimal, minimal white spirit just carries it in? Uh, like that. And you could just do that all over. You know, just dab it, 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 dab it. And just kind of give your wall a, a wash. Just let it absorb in. Now that's cool like it is. You know, um, and I just go along the bottom like that. And um, then I have a separate brush. I clean these, by the way, with white spirit. Just like it says to do. Um, and then I take... I take my number four um, flat brush and again and I use my number I just use my uh, number eight I go to my number four and doing the same technique I'm going to be using the filter the brown for the brown for dark yellow um, I just did the wash for dark yellow now I'm going to use the filter brown for dark yellow. Um, and it only takes a little. This, uh, uh, this stuff is actually already pre-mixed. The filter is already pre-mixed. It already has it really watered down for the with the spirit. So you don't need to dilute it. You just take it right from the bottle with your brush. And again, this is very translucent stuff. So... It's just it's just a coloring and um, if you can see let me move this up a little bit here see how it goes on in a, in a different has right here versus the brown it's very thinned out and I haven't done anything over here yet so watch what happens I'm just kind of filling in the rest of it it's kind of a yellowish brown that's pretty cool look and I'm just kind of going all over it and I'm just dabbing I'm not really brushing I'm just dabbing because it absorbs in and spreads out I don't be worried if you get a little bit on the others it actually gives it a little bit it just blends it in so now you have that's how I do that Now that we're done with that, um, we're able to do what we have to do. All right, now um, what we're going to do is I'm going to be using um, a couple of different techniques here. And uh, I'm going to be using, I have officially decided, I'm going to be doing uh, the light avocado instead of the um, clover truffle color. Because I just, I just like the light, light avocado. And we are going to do the ivory, light ivory. And this is a test piece for my actual build. So we'll see how it all is going to come out. Um, next, take my handy dandy sponge. Cut me a piece off of that. People ask me. They know that I have these. I've been asked, why do I, I why do I not use these? I'll tell you why. These I usually specifically use for signs, applying signs, because they have that clean, flat top. And I don't want my signs getting uh, anything on it from any of the other stuff. Oh, yeah.
So, after applying all this stuff, and it dries, um, I take my sponge, and I take some of the, um, the paint I want, and, um, what I'm doing is, um, adding a little bit of a lay, uh, I'm also needing to add a little bit of gray to the back side of this. Well, not a lot, just, just a little bit. So it kind of accents the, um, the whole, the whole piece. So what I'm going to do is is uh, take my other sponge that had gray on it, just dab it down, and then I'm just gonna go from top to bottom, just dabbing it all the way around. And I'm just gonna go over the entire piece just to give it some gray. Hold on a second. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. And, you know, you just gotta... And I'm doing that mostly because I'm gonna have this a two-tone color. And the upper half is gonna be the ivory, which has more of a dirty look. And then I'm adding a, just a subtle amount on the bottom because of the green. You know, and um, this is doing the prep for the base. Um, the reason why I'm doing this is because the next step... Is actually the next step that uh, I have to do with the rubber cement. So once I get this to dry, we'll be okay. And I will show you what I believe Frank is wanting me to do to uh, to achieve the technique. All right, we'll let that dry for a minute, and we'll come back in a minute and we will do what we need to do in the next step okay so now that we this is dry um we can start adding the special feature of elmer's rubber cement now this is something that frank mentioned to me uh to, to try doing um and I'm going to see how it turns out. <laughs> yeah, I know you're playing. That's okay. So I am going to take th this and apply it in just certain spots. But before I do, I, t I gotta take all the glue off from it sitting in the bottle. Because it's just too much. I don't want it coming down and dripping on me while I brush. And actually, that's about what you want to do anyway with this. And this will take it uh, for a while. So, I mean, all you have to do is take a little bit on the brush. Take it off. And apply it. If I'm not mistaken, Frank, you're... you're. I'm hoping I'm hitting this right. So, you're just applying this in areas that you want to show uh, weathered. So, um, and you just, I'm just, I'm assuming I'm going to do this right. You just kind of dab it where you want or streak it, you know, um, you know, you just brush it. Uh, I just 
dry brush it. So the crucial part of this whole thing is you got to remember where you put the rubber cement uh, on your on here um, and um, so um, this is just a trial uh, I'll probably get better at this process but it's all good so um, uh, I'll verify with Frank whether I did it good or not. Now, he, I'm sure you probably could go the entire whole layer over it and then just scratch off what you want. Um, uh, it's all new to me, so I'm doing this as I go, learning little by little. So, we're going to leave it right here. Now, remember, we're doing an upper layer and a bottom layer for the two tones. I have white... I have white, and then I also have my uh, um, ivory, my white ivory and my, my avocado. So now that I have my avocado, I got my sponge all ready here. Uh, And yes, it does make it kind of shiny, but what you do is, this is not in any particular order that it's going on the building. I'm just doing a top, one side, one half green and one half white, uh, just to show you the effects. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of sponge on what I want. Um... So I'm just sponging this on. And I could have used a brush with this effect, but if you're doing a sponge painting and then you want to have the peeled effect added to it, you can. So, um, you can brush it on, I'm sure, but I'm just doing this as, as a test to see how well it comes out. Now, um, let that dry and we'll come back to it. Now, I'll take my, a little bit more paint. which is going to be the uh, ivory that I'll be using. Um, and take my sponge and just go over it. And what I'm noticing is you're not having to worry about where you've already painted because uh, the or you put the, the glue because the glue seems to um, almost come through. Now I'm just smoothing this out 
uh, on here. And then going back on a dry side of the sponge and just sponging off a little bit. And if you look, you can see where that has left blotches. Now, this is my first time doing it. So as, you know, that all works out, you know, it, it'll get better. Um, I do have a pencil here. And a pencil works great for e taking off the, the, the rubber cement. So, before we get on any further, uh, let's start erasing some of this rubber cement um, to reveal the, the effects underneath. Because he said just, you just take an eraser and do it. See how it's it's actually doing it. This is just a test, guys. Um, like I said, so what I'll do is I'll just go back down here and just apply some more paint. And the, because these areas, I just applied a little too much erasing. And it all comes in trial and error. Uh, so lightly, I will emphasize lightly because it's just taking off. It's just rubbing off the, it, you're just rubbing off the rubber cement that you have on there. So, 
yes, uh, after doing this a couple times, um, I would definitely recommend lightly, like I'm doing here. Um, lightly let your eraser rub it off. Um, cause what happened down here is I put a little too much pressure and what it did is it made a smear and all that. Whereas here in the middle, it's just lightly rubbing off and removing the paint. Um, it is something that takes, you know, here's a darker side. That's okay. That looks okay. This is okay. Uh, all right, I guess. But you see what I did is on the base coat under the gray, I have that brown. That brown's coming through the gray a little bit because in, in patches, I didn't, you know, of the, all the patching. And that's what I do there. Now, now that I did that with the white and I've learned it, now I'm going to come down here to the green and just apply the same. Now, let's see if we can do this better down here than I did up there. Um... So I'm going to lightly just go over, just ever so lightly with the eraser and get to where I want. And it, you know, I'm just going to go over the whole, the whole. Everything as a whole. So I have definitely not mastered this, guys, by any means. Um, this is a cool technique. I like how it, how it's working, Frank. Um, definitely, it's going to take a little bit more practice um, to get it where it should be coming out. Um, but I am... Um, Um, so what I know that was off screen for a minute there. That was my fault, but as I'm going to zoom, bring this up. So right here, so I'm just taking it and I'm, I'm just rubbing it wherever I, you know, you applied it light. I'm just doing it lightly. And it's kind of hard to explain this stuff sometimes as I do it because I want to make sure I'm doing it right. Um, but that anyway, that's the effect. Just lightly, a thin coat, but lightly, and then you can erase it off of the model wherever you put it. Just remember where you put it. Um, that kind of thing. But. Um, see how I had a darker coat under there? And then I put uh, the glue over that. And then I just went back and then lightly erased it. That is a cool effect. Uh, and this is uh, another way you can do chipping too. Is right here. if you do it good enough, it chips the paint. Um, and down here, you know, it, it, um, I know I got areas where I got a little more glue where and then I should have, but it's all right. 
Um, but yes, uh, trial and error, clearly. Uh, learn how to do it before you do it to your buildings. Um, I will probably at some point use this on my builds um, as I get better at it. Uh, I love the wearing and chipping effect, uh, Frank. It, I think overall it turned out well. I mean, you do see blotches like this on old homes. Um, and you do see spots like this, uh, chipping spots on homes. Um, the green, uh, could use more fading, but again, you know, I haven't really done a lot on it. You know, I'm just rubbing off the glue. Um, see how I did that? I just rubbed it and it took the paint down. It's just chipping it out. So, uh, yes. So, if I think about it, um, doing stuff like this, you just want to do little amounts and let it fully dry. Then paint over it your top color, your finish color, and then erase the with a light eraser uh, motion like this over the, the glue. And then you have your finished look. Um, again, uh, I do have some work to do with this technique. I am clearly not too great at it i mean it came out okay but it's still not to where i would feel feel great about it being on an actual building so please take my advice and practice it before you apply you i start applying it um, um but yeah you wanted to lightly do the the eraser over your uh rubber cement spots after you do the finished coat of your paint so what so a recap uh so we did our base coat the the washes the staining and all that for the age and then we went ahead and applied the rubber cement glue we let make sure you let that dry and then you get your top coat let that dry and then when that's dry you go back over and you just erase the glue and I'm still getting that all down, but um, it will get better and better. Um, these aren't bad spots by any means, um, but it could be better. Um, on the green, I, I don't really show a whole lot on the green, um, but um, the way that I will probably be doing it uh, this is actually a pretty cool way of doing it, Frank. I like it. Uh, as soon as I master it a little better, I'll feel more comfortable using it on my builds. Just something I wanted to share with everybody um, today that you share with me on how you do your chipping and wearing effect. But uh, the way that I'll probably be doing it on my build this time around is probably this method, um, which I fully covered in the previous video. Um, basically again, I'll wash over all of it. What I did here with, uh, basically this was titanium white, titanium white, and this is ivory. Uh, I'm going to be using ivory. The reason why I'm using ivory is because it's already has kind of that dirty look. If you look at it, this is white and that's ivory white. Ivory is more of a cream, dirty look. So uh, it ties right in. I don't have to really weather it a whole lot um, once it's applied. Um, and I like both of these techniques. Um, no, I'm not that great at either one of them. I'm actually better at this one than I am at this one. But I will work with both of them and they will probably become a go-to for as I get better at them. Um... So with that, that is the video for today.
on what Frank has showed me how to, uh, well, not really showed me, explained to me how to do. Um, and I just wanted to try it out. Um, it's probably how it came out. To, I feel that it's probably right about a 6 out of a 10 right now. Um, and that leaves room for improvement to get better at it. Um, far as complication, it's not complicated at all. Uh, it's just a matter of just taking your uh, rubber cement um, and then doing a very thin layer and just let it dry and only apply it in the areas that you are going to want to achieve um, the, the look you're looking for. And that is my suggestion for applying the Elmers. Um, but on the backside of that, just make sure that <clears throat> when you erase it, don't put a lot of pressure. Just let it do the small little wears. Just lightly let the eraser do its its job. And erase. Um, so, take that as you need to take it. But that is all I have for this week. Um, <clears throat> I've done a couple different videos this week already. So it's been a very busy week here on the bench, but, uh, for me, um, but yes, uh, we are going to be moving forward with Ronnie's River Repair. So, uh, over this next week, I will be starting to use this technique on my walls and we will start getting this thing all painted. Um, and... I just got to figure out now what, which way the theme is going to be, you know, um, so that will be determined when we see, when you see the next video, um, I will already have decided that and made my, my choice, but the colors again for my building are going to be light avocado by Americana and light ivory by ceramic coat. Uh, those are my colors that I will be using. Um, so with that, I will leave you a good day wherever you are at. Hopefully everything is going well in your craft there on your bench. Uh, so until next time, we will see you later.